All right, so so today we're going to be looking into the synagogue of Satan. Now, this is just going to be a, a kind of, I guess you could say, a freestyle. I didn't really put everything together. Everything is in here. So, you know, I, I tried to write something down, but I just didn't have time to write everything down, especially with, with everything that was going on last week. I couldn't write anything down. So everything is going to be in here, and I'm going to be relaying, relaying everything to you now. Um, a lot of people think that the synagogue of Satan is like, uh, you know, th th this place back then um, during the... Um, during the time of uh, the Church of Smyrna and uh, Philadelphia, um, where there was this uh, uh, giant colossus of a statue of Zeus, and they believed that that was the synagogue of Satan. Could be true, um, but there there is a physical group of people that were called back then the synagogue of Satan. And we're gonna we're gonna look into that in in history, um, and also a lot of people today a lot of people today believe a lot of people now this is not from my this is not my belief or anything a lot of people today believe that the synagogue of Satan are the Jews in Israel, um, and that they're not really the Jews right and they're they're, they're called the synagogue of Satan, and so um, a lot of people believe that that's they are also the synagogue of Satan, um, but um, we are going to look into what the Bible actually says. We're going to look into how, because there's only two, there's only two passages where the synagogue of Satan is mentioned. But we can look, we can look deeper into um, into it and try to see what is. You know what is synagogue? Why is it the synagogue of Satan, and all these things? So let's let's get into it. Let's let's pray real quick, and then we we can um we can get into the study. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again, Father, for giving us this opportunity to study, um, for encouraging me to actually go live, uh, today. Um, I know, Father, that this was a topic that I've been studying for for a while. Um, I didn't make notes. Well, I did make some notes, but I, I hope and pray, Father, that you are here so that you can relay um, what it is that you need to relay um, through this message, Father. We invite you in the Holy Spirit. Please guide us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so the synagogue of Satan. Let's go to... We're going to we're gonna try to do this really quickly. I know that this is... I mean, this might turn into a deep study, but I'm hoping that it... <laughs> I mean, I always say that it, I, I I always say that I'm hoping it it's 45 minutes, but it's it's never that. Okay, but anyways, um, synagogue of Satan. Let's go to let's go to. Uh oh. All right. Okay, let's go to Revelation two, and verse nine. Now this is the the church of smart. By the way, by the way. For those of you guys who know history, right? For those of you guys who know these seven churches, um, what are the time frame of these seven churches? Does anybody know what what are the time frame of these seven churches? Now, remember, John was the one writing to these seven churches, right? John is the one in Revelation two writing to these seven churches, right? So, what are the time? What what is the time frame? Um, of the seven churches that, that that you find in the book of Revelation, what is was the time frame? Right? Is is it in the second century? Uh, okay, Daniel says from Christ to present present time. Okay, I'll take that. Okay, so 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 Daniel says from Christ to, to present time. I, I'll take that. But but what makes you what makes you what what makes you say that it it is in the present time because we know that the, you know the, these are historical churches right why <laughs> okay why what what makes you say that it's present time.
Y, ok, Walt says, I thought it's, it's the history of the church. Yes, yes, it is, it is the history of the church. There are, like, literal, these are literal churches back then. Like, the, these, the, the church of Smyrna, Smyrna, Philadelphia, Laodicea, these are literal churches back then. But it is also, you can say, the ages of the church. You can also say, can we also say that these are characteristics of, of the church or of any church can we also say that can we can we say that can we say that we can look at the book of, we can look at the church of smyrna and say okay the church of smyrna have these characteristics i can point you to a church an individual church that have these characteristics and so this church uh sp um spiritually or characteristically is the church of Smyrna in character? Can we can we say that? Okay. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so we're in the same, we're in the same page. Okay, so so these churches, these seven churches, yes, they are fit, they were literal churches back then, but you can also say that these were the ages of the church. Now re remember the, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, unfortunately, is called the Laodicean Church. Unfortunately, unfortunately. We are called the Laodicean Church. Now, now, when you think about the 144,000, now remember, the 144,000 are the ones that are going to be left, uh, that, that are going to be the remnant when, uh, when Jesus Christ comes back, right? Would you say, would you say, okay, which of the churches in character would you say the 144,000 uh would be which would you say which would you say I, I i'm hoping most of you guys are adventists here i'm hoping but if we, if we can say that the, the if we can say that the 144000 uh is a, is a, is, a, is a, if the 144000 is this type of people right this type of church which would it be Philadelphia. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Philadelphia. Okay, it's not Ephesus. It's not Ephesus. Because remember, if you guys have ever studied the churches, the, the seven churches, six out of the seven churches, Christ says something bad about them, right? The only church that, that Christ does not say anything bad is the church of Philadelphia, and though, and and we don't have time to do this, but the Church of Philadelphia, that char the characteristics of the Church of Philadelphia, will be the characteristics of the hundred forty four thousand. The characteristics of the, the 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 Church of Philadelphia will be the characteristics of the hundred forty four thousand. So the hundred forty four forty four thousand in character would be the Church of Philadelphia. Okay, okay. <clears throat> okay, so I hope I hope we're getting that right now. Now again, we don't have time to to dig to to actually study that out. But if you study it out, if you study out the characteristics of the hundred forty four thousand, we know that they are perfect. They're perfect. They they you know they are the ones that are keeping the commandments of God. They are the ones that that are loving each other, just like the the, the Church of Philadelphia. There is nothing wrong with the Church of Philadelphia. There's nothing wrong with the Church of Philadelphia. So the 144,000 in character will be uh, the character of the Church of Philadelphia. Okay? Um, okay, so so now let's go to let's go to Revelation 2. Revelation 2. Um, starting from verse 8. Is this thing working? Okay. Revelation 2, starting from verse 8. Sorry guys, my my uh this thing's not working um, properly here, but we'll try to work through it. Okay, so the Church of Smyrna. Here's what it says about the Church of, of Smyrna. Now, again, so the Church of Smyrna, there's not really anything bad with it except for that um, that they they go through their you know their their tribula uh, tribulations and that they uh, 
they are poor or they they have poverty okay so watch this okay here we go you know what hmm uh i think i see why okay there you go sorry guys okay here we go here we go and unto the angel of the church of smyrna write these things saith the first and the last which was dead and is alive i know thy works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich and i know um the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Okay, so, so, so this is the reason why. This is the reason why a lot of people today claim or think that this, the synagogue of Satan, are the Jews in Israel right now that claim to be Jews, but are not. Right. Even though there's no, right here, there is no, you can't prove that here. You can't prove that here. Um, you can't thoroughly prove that here. Uh, so so this is why they say that, that, you know, they're Jews and they claim that they're Jews, but they're not. Um, but they are of the synagogue of Satan. But you can't, you can't really prove that here. Now, let's keep, let's keep going. By the way, I don't believe that they are the synagogue of Jew, uh, of, of uh, Satan. I don't believe that. This is talking about something deeper, much deeper than that. Okay, let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. What is Christ talking about? Does anybody know what this is? What, does anybody know what Christ is talking about here? Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Okay, now remember, remember, this, um, this is in the book of Revelation. This is, not only is this, yes, is, this is literal. Actually, like the church of Smyrna is literal. But the 10 days here, since, since this is a prophetic book, and it is a book signified according to um, Revelation 1 verse 1, what are the 10 days? The ten days, remember in in Numbers fourteen and um, Ezekiel four, when God declares a prophecy, God declared a prophecy and He gave a time. He said each day for a year, right? Each day for a year. So ten days here in prophecy would be ten. Years. So, what is he? What is Christ talking about here when he says, "Fear none of those things which shall which thou shalt suffer." Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall uh, have tribulation ten days, ten years of persecution. Thank you. Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Uh, Richard said uh, Diocletian exactly. Diocletian. It's not 10,000 years. It's not 10,000 10, years. That's, um, it wouldn't be 10,000 years. But it's, it is 10 years of persecution by the Roman emperor Diocletian. So they were thrown into, but, but what, what catapulted that? Does anybody remember? If you guys study, the, uh, st study history, <coughs> what catapulted that was um, this, this, the Bishop of Smyrna, a Bishop of Smyrna, his name was, um, Oh man, it left my mind. Polycarp, that I think that's I believe that's his name, right? Polycarp. So he was the one that was that the Jews back in like literal Jews back in those time asked the Roman emperor to throw him into prison and to persecute him for no uh, no good reason. His name was Polycarp. You guys can, you guys can look this up. Uh, you know, you guys can uh, read some articles about it. But, but th those who are actual literal Jews. Now they're not. They're not like. 
they're, they're not Jews who claim to be Jews but are not really Jews. They, 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 are, they were physical, literal Jews from the bloodline of Abraham. <clears throat> they, they asked the, um, the, uh, the Roman emperor to put Polycarp into prison and he was martyred in prison. They, um, they, tried, to, they tried to burn him alive. They tried to burn him alive, but he wouldn't burn. And so someone had to go in the, you know, someone had to go in the <coughs> in the fire and stab him to death. His name is Polycarp. And so th it was th they were literal Jews. They were literal Jews that asked the Roman emperor to persecute or to throw um, this bishop into prison and burn him alive. Okay? Literal Jews. So, let's go back to Revelation 2 and verse 9 now. I know thy works and, the tri and tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich, and I, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are, uh, but are the synagogue of Satan. They were Jews, but are not. What does he mean by that? Because when Polycarp was thrown into prison, the people that, that threw him into prison were literal Jews. They, even, they also claimed that they were Jews, but they were literal Jews. What did, what did Christ mean then? I think you guys know what I'm, where I'm trying to go with. What did Christ mean then that they were Jews but are not? They claim to be Jews, but what are the what are Jews? Jews are are, are from who? The the word Jew is from that's true that is from the Jew from the tribe of Judah, right? Where is Judah from? Like where did he where did he come from? Richard says, not spiritually, not spiritually Jew. We're going to, okay, so we're going to, we're, we're going to, I hope that we don't have to go there, but we might have to go there. So they are, so, oh yeah, okay, so, 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 okay, so they, so they, so they came from Jacob and Jacob came from, Jacob came from who? Ultimately, every Jew, every Israelite comes from Abraham, right? Ultimately, every Israelite comes from Abraham ultimately ultimately okay so these were literal Jews they claim to be Jews but are not Jesus Christ said they, they say that they're Jews but they are not why so they are from the synagogue of Satan do you guys remember do you guys remember give me one second do you guys remember there is a quote from Christ when he was when he was talking to the Jews. There is a quote. Mm. Mm. You know what? This might go a little deep. And uh okay, this might this might go a little deep. Okay, okay. Before we go there, what is a synagogue? Synagogue is a, is a church or a a house, a place of worship. Remember when when Paul was going into the synagogue to uh, to read every Sabbath in, in in Acts thirteen, Acts eighteen, Acts seventeen. Um, in Luke four and verse sixteen, it says that <coughs> it says that it says that um, uh, as his custom was, Jesus Christ went into the synagogue every Sabbath for to read. That's Luke four verse sixteen. So the synagogue is back then is what they call the church. A lot of people are going to be mad about that, but it's it's a building where they go into to worship. That's what a synagogue is, right? It's not the temple because there's only one temple, but there's there, there's the synagogues. There's synagogues. It's like little uh, churches that they go into um, to uh, to read. Okay, that's what a synagogue is. Pretty much like a a building or a church or a house. 
but a synagogue or a church or a house it, it can it can be a place of worship if there are if there are no worshipers there so really a synagogue remember what Jesus Christ remember what Paul says know ye not that ye are the temple of God so the synagogue really is the it's a body of people it's not just the building right it's not just the building it's the it's the congregation because the building is just a building. It just doesn't it it means nothing without the without the people there or without anything anyone there. So the synagogue is a body of people. A synagogue is a place where a body of people would gather. But the but the real the real thing the real substance would be the people, right? And so. That's why he says in, in, in verse 9 that they claim to be Jews but are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. They are the people of Satan. They are the people of Satan. Okay, the synagogue or the congregation of Satan. Okay, so who are the congregation of Satan? If you can look, if you can look in the Bible to let me know, okay, these are the congregation of Satan. Where can where can we see that in the Bible that that it is distinctly explained? <laughs> Richard, oh bro, Richard, Richard always comes through, man. Richard always comes through. Let's go there real quick. Richard always comes through. Okay. Uh where was it? Uh, you said John 8, verse 44. Oh, man. Okay, John 8 and verse 44. Now, I'm, I'm going to show... I mean, for those of you guys who are, who are Adventists, you guys should already know this. I'm going to show you guys something later on, okay? I'm going to show you guys something later on. This might be reviewed to some of you guys, but I'm going to show you guys something later on that is absolutely amazing now remember 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 the 144,000 in character are the ch is the church of philadelphia okay remember that put that in your mind okay so john 8 verse 44 john 8 verse 44 um well we can start from verse we can start from verse 39 okay remember Remember, the Jews came from, ultimately from Abraham. The Israelites came ultimately from Abraham. Now watch this. Watch this now. John 8, starting from verse 39. Now this is, the, I'm talking, talking about the Pharisees here, the Jews here. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Okay? So, they're talking about who their father is. They're, they're talking about their lineage. Who are who they claiming to be. What is their identity? Okay. Watch what Jesus says. So, so they are saying, hey, look, our father is Abraham. Jesus says this. If ye are Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Ye would do the works of Abraham. So if you are Abraham's children, what was, what was Abraham called? Does, does anybody know that does any does anybody remember the title that Abraham was given? Abraham was Abraham was the father of what? Does anybody remember the title that 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 was given to Abraham, the father of what? The father of many okay, the father of faith. The father of faith. He is also called the father of many nations, but yeah, the father of faith. The father of faith. Okay, now watch this. Watch this now. If we were Ab if you if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Remember, faith without works is dead. James 2 says, "Show me your your faith without your works, and I will show you my uh, my faith through my works." Faith without works is dead. He says, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Why? Because what propels, what propels anybody to do the works of Abraham? 
It's the faith of Abraham. Right? So the faith of, if you have the faith of Abraham, that will propel you to do the work of, of Abraham. Okay? Abraham is the father of faith. Okay? Abraham is the father of faith. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Abraham did not do this. And then he says this. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said uh, they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Look what Jesus says. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded, uh, proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear, hear my word, ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. So, who, who did they claim they were? Who did they claim their, their, their what did they claim their, their uh, identity was? What did they claim their identity was? Israelite, Jew. They claim to be God's children. They also claim to be the children of who? They claim to be the children of Abraham. They claim to be the children of, children of Abraham. Jew. So they were claiming to be Jews. They were claiming to be Israelites or Jews. But instead, they are from the synagogue of who? Instead, they're from the synagogue of their father, the devil. Do you guys see the correlation? They're claiming to be Jews. They're claiming to be Jews, but Jesus said, no, you are not Jews. You are not, you are not of the line of Abraham, because if you were, you would do the works of Abraham. But since you do not do the works of Abraham, you are whose? You're the devil's. You're Satan's child. If this makes sense, now we can, we can now apply this to Revelation 2 and verse 9. Revelation 2 and verse 9, those were real Jews. Those were actual, literal Jews. But they wanted to persecute the people. They wanted to persecute God's people. So those of the, the those who are of the synagogue of Satan, this is not an actual this is not an actual line or a lineage. It's not an actual lineage. Those who are of the synagogue of Satan are those who claim to be. Jews are of Abraham, but they don't do the work of Abraham. They claim to be the children of God, but they don't do the work of God. They don't have the faith of Jesus Christ. They don't have the faith of Abraham. Even though they are literal, even if they are literal Jews, if they are not doing the works of Abraham or the works of Christ, they're not, they're not really Jews. They're from the synagogue of. We can go to we can go to Romans two. Now we we've we've dealt with this many many times. Romans two, starting from verse. Um. Uh, I guess yeah. We, we, okay, so we can start from verse twenty four. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. For circumcision. Who's, who are the ones that are circumcised? The Jews or the Israelites. Verily profiteth if thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision, your being a Jew, is made uncircumcision. You become a Gentile. You become a Gentile. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision, shall not him being a Gentile be counted for as Circumcision shouldn't he be called a Jew if he call if 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 he kept the righteousness of the law? 
Verse 28, For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is the circumcision um, which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. The true Israel, or the true Jew, is a spiritual Jew. The true Jew is a spiritual Jew. You can be a Jew outwardly, but if you are not a spiritual Jew, you are not a Jew. The true Jew is a spiritual Jew. So if you call yourself a Jew, if you're calling yourself a Jew, if you're calling yourself God's people, you're calling yourself Abraham's seed, and you do, and you do not do the righteousness of the law, where does that place you? Where does that place you? Does that place you in the synagogue of Satan? If you claim to be a Jew but don't do the righteousness of the law? If you claim to, to, to be a Jew but you're, over, you're persecuting other people? Are you, are, are, you, are you truly a Jew then? You or are you in the synagogue of Satan? Which one? Which one? So, let's go back to Romans 2. I mean, no, Revelation 2. Verse 9. These were real, um, real, actual Jews that persecuted Polycarp. They claim to be Jews, but are not because, because, of, because they're persecuted people. They're of the synagogue of Satan. So anybody who claims to be a, even if you claim to be a spiritual Jew, a Christian, even if you claim to be a Christian, but you're out here <coughs> persecuting people, you're of the synagogue of Satan. I hope nobody's, I, I, I hope nobody here is in, the, in that synagogue. <laughs> I hope nobody here is in that synagogue. Now, now watch this. I want to I want to show you guys something. Uh, oh man, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't show you guys this yet. Okay, maybe I okay, maybe I shouldn't show you, you guys this yet. So, so the people who truly persecuted um the, the church of Smyrna for 10 days or 10 years, uh prophetically, um, or literally 10 years, this is a prophetic 10 days. Um, is uh, Diocletian. Diocletian uh, of Rome were the ones that um, were. He was the one that persecuted the Church of Smyrna for ten years. Diocletian and and, and his successor, I forgot his successor's name, but you guys can look that. You guys can look that up now. Okay, so remember. These are the church ages, right? The church of Ephesus, there's always, there was something bad with the church of Ephesus. Um, the church of Smyr Smyrna, not really, except for that they were, uh, they, they were going through their tribulations. Um, Pergamum, there was something bad. Thyatira, there was something bad. Uh, you can go to um, the church of Sardis, there was something bad. The when you get to the church of Philadelphia, Nothing bad. Everything great. Let's go to the Church of, uh, Church of Philadelphia now. Actually, let's skip Church of uh, Philadelphia. Let's go to the Church of Laodicea. Now, this is, the, uh, this is our age right now. We are living in the Church of Laodicea. And unto the angel of the Church of Laodicea write, These things say the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning um, of creation uh, of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would uh, thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. That means I will no longer. I, I will not. I will not even say your name. Remember, um, remember, um, Jesus, uh, uh, remember when Jesus Christ said, um, 
If you confess me in front of people, I will confess you in front of my father and his angels. If you're lukewarm, he's not gonna he's not gonna confess you. He's gonna spew you out of his mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That means sinful. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayst be rich and white raiment that thou mayst be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness now the word the word nakedness in the bible is is um it means uh sinfulness do not appear or uh, uh, sinfulness or shame do not appear and and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayst see Okay, so this was the, the counsel that Jesus Christ um, wanted to give the church of Laodicea. We are now living in the church of Laodicea. This is the, the, the church of Laodicea is our age. We think that we are spiritually, spiritually rich. We're actually bankrupt. We think we know it all. We think we know it all. We think we know the Bible. We think we know the everything, like the ins and outs of the Bible. We think we know it all. And that's our that's kind of like our, our, our Trojan uh Trojan horse. Um, some of us Adventists. We think we know the Bible more than anybody, more than any denomination. Which I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'm not going to lie. We do. We do. I'm not going to lie. We do. Oh, man. I don't want to sound boastful. But um, I would say that when it comes to Bible study, there is no other group that can study the Bible better than any true Adventist. There, there is the, the, there is no other group. I don't want to sound boastful, man, but 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 it's true. We think we know it all. This is our age. That's us, Laodicea. That's us. But he said, "I I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire." What is gold tried in the fire? That's faith. That they that thou mayst be rich, white raiment, white raiment. That thou mayest be clothed. Why? Because we are, because we're naked. We're we're shameful. We're sinners. He said, "Hey, look, buy of me gold. Buy of me that faith. Buy of me this white raiment that I may clothe you, so that you may be saved." Remember that that raiment or that robe of salvation in Isaiah. And the, uh, uh, and the the spiritual eye salve. That's vision. That's prophecy. We, I wish we can, we can't, we can't really go through all of this right now. But that's us. That's us. Now, do are there going to be people? Let me ask. Are there going to be people in the Seventh Adventist Church, in this Laodicean age, that are going to take this counsel? Let me ask that. Are there going to be people in the in the Seventh Avenue Church, or even in the in the Church of Laodicea? Will there be people that will actually take this counsel? Philip says yes. How you doing, Philip? Philip says yes. Affixion says yes. Okay. So when we take this counsel, what happens? Do we stay in Laodicea? When, when the when the okay, <laughs> someone says some okay. When these some people take this counsel, what happens? Do they do they stay in Laodicea? What church do they go to? What 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 church? What church do they go to then? They become they become what church? They become what church? <clears throat> Uh, 
<laughs> Philadelphia, thank you. Philadelphia. So they be, so when when we take this council, we being in Laodicea, when we take this council, we become the Church of Philadelphia. It it kind of it kind of reverses, goes back to we we go back to our past. Remember, in our past, in our past, when when um when we first started the founding, you know the um the founding fathers of our church, that age, that age uh, of our church, they had brotherly love. Okay, let, let's let's go let's go to let's go to that age of the church. Let's go to Philadelphia real quick. Watch this. Okay. Church of Philadelphia. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set thee, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a, a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Kept my word, not denied my name. Now remember, when you when you get married, when you get married, whose name do you take? The husband. Who's the husband? Jesus Christ. Who is the bride? We, the church, are the bride. If we are the bride of Christ, let's not deny his name. Let's take on his name. Okay? Has kept my word. And has not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do um, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have uh, I have loved thee. Did you guys know that Mrs. White says something about this? Did you guys know? That at the very end, the 104... Did you guys know that in, 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 in Great Controversy, she actually pens this thing. She says, she says that the, 100, the 144,000 are going to be in the mountains. And those who, those who are Sunday keepers, because remember, there's going to be a group of people, the 144,000, that are going to be alive, that are keeping God's commandments. That's Revelation 14 and verse 12, those who keep the commandments of God, those who have the patience of the saints, who keep the commandments of God, and who has the faith of Jesus. Those are the 144,000. So the 144,000 are going to be the only ones keeping the commandments of God and, and has the seal of God and are keeping the Sabbath, the true Sabbath. Everybody else fall under the synagogue of Satan. Everybody else are persecuting 144,000. Chasing after them. Did you guys know that Mrs. White says that those who are chasing after the 144,000 in the mountains are going to bow down to them when that time comes? Watch. Watch this. Let's go to... Let's go to... Um, Great Controversy, page 635. Paragraph 2 and 3. It says, th These are the people of God. Some in prison cells, some hidden in solitary retreats in the forests and in the mountains, still plead for divine protection while in every quarter um, companies of armed men urged on by hosts of evil angels are preparing for the work of death. So they're trying to kill... So those that are of the synagogue of Satan are trying to kill those who are already part of the 144,000. But did you guys know that Mrs. White says that those who are who are already part of the 144,000 in these last days, in those in those days, will not be killed. Even though they will try to kill them, they will not be killed. Look what it says. It is now in the hour of utmost extremity that the God of Israel will interpose for the deliverance of his chosen. 
saith the Lord, ye shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart as when one goeth to come into the mountain of the Lord the, uh, to the Almighty of Israel and the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall show the lightning down of his, um, down of his arm with the indignation of his anger and with the flames of a devouring fire with, uh, with scattering and tempests and hailstones. Isaiah 30, verse 29 and 30. With shouts of triumph, jeering, and uh, imprecation, throngs of evil men are about to rush upon their prey. Those, those are the 144,000. When lo, a dense blackness, deeper than the darkness of the night, falls upon the earth. Then a rainbow, shining with the glory from the throne of God, spans the heaven and seems to encircle each praying company. Those are the 144,000. The angry multitudes are suddenly arrested. That means they stop. They're, they're shocked. Not like arrested by the police. Their mocking cries die away. The objects of their murderous rage are forgotten. With fearful um, forebodings, they gaze upon the symbol of God's covenant and long to be shielded from its um, overpowering brightness. It is this time, it's at this time where they are going to, to shout and scream for the rocks to fall on them. Okay, now watch this. Let's go, to, let's skip on over to page 655. Now remember, remember, those that are the synagogue of Satan that, that claim they're Christians keeping Sunday instead of, the, instead of God's Sabbath. They're going to be the ones who are persecuting the 144,000. Synagogue of Satan. They're the synagogue of Satan. Okay, now watch this. Great Controversy, page 655. It says, men, talking about those, those, same, those same people that are trying to persecute the, the, the 144,000. Look what it says. Men whom the world would um, has worshipped for their talents and eloquence, now see these things in their true light. They realize that they have forfeited by transgression, um, uh, and they fall at the feet of those whose fidelity, uh, f f uh, fidelity they have despised and derided and confess that God has loved them. Those are the church, those are they that, that are from the church of Philadelphia, the 144,000. So those who are in the, those who are of the, the synagogue of Satan are going to try to persecute 144,000. They're going to fail miserably. Jesus Christ, is going to, Jesus Christ is going to come back and Mrs. White even says that they, they see these people in the mountains and they're glowing and they bow down to them. Not to, not to worship them, but because they're very afraid. I have so many... There's so many more, more things to read. If you guys have, have time, read The uh, Great Controversy, pay, um, chapter 40 and chapter 41. So the synagogue of Satan is not is is not like a, it's not like a physical lineage. The synagogue of Satan are those who claim to be Christians, who claim to be the from the seed of Abraham, who claim to be from 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 the father of faith, but really are not. They claim to be Christians, but are, are over here persecuting other people, persecuting Sabbath keepers. Those are, those are the ones who are called the synagogue of Satan in these end times. They're going to be persecuting those who are from the, 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 the church of Philadelphia, the 144,000. Which will you choose? Which will you choose? Synagogue of Satan, 144,000. Which will you choose? Are we ready to be part of this group?
Church of Philadelphia. I mean, just look at look at the Church of Philadelphia. Look at the Church of Philadelphia. If you look at the characteristics of the Church of Philadelphia and it's not you, we better get ready. If we don't have brotherly love for one another, we cannot be part of the Church of Philadelphia. If we have not kept the Word of God, if we have denied the name of Christ, we cannot be part of the Church of Philadelphia. We cannot be part of uh, the 144,000. Now, being part of the 144,000 shouldn't be our main focus or our main goal. Following Christ should be our main goal. But if you so happen to be alive during that time and you're following Christ, you will end up in the Church of Philadelphia. 144,000. If that's our desire, friends, if our desire is to follow Christ so much so that we, if we are alive during that time, we fall under the Church of Philadelphia, even though we, even though we are being persecuted by the synagogue of Satan, if that is your desire, then we need to accept Christ today. We need to accept Christ today. We need to repent today. We need to display that brotherly love today. We need to get baptized and be saved. We're not promised tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, again for giving us this opportunity to study. Father, we know that we can break this down even more, but it would take hours and hours, Father, to study this subject. Please be with us now, Father. Give us this Give us the character of the Church of Philadelphia. Help us, Father, to have that desire to love one another like those of the Church of Philadelphia, that we may, that we may be under that church, Father, when that time comes, if we are even alive during that time, Father. Help us to get in the, into that church. Help us, Father, not to circle around trying, to, trying our best to get into that church. Help us to not circle around, Father, but help us and lead us, Father, into that church, the Church of Philadelphia. Please, Father, help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. So, wow. Oh, we just, we made an hour. Okay, we made an hour. Great. We made an hour. Let's see. We made an hour. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go live again in a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go live with with um with my brother uh, uh, Sixto. Um, I'm gonna call him and see. Let me see. I'm gonna call him and see what time he would like to go live. But we're probably gonna go live again in, in maybe in thirty minutes to an hour. And we're going to be talking about marriage, okay? So if there's anything, if there's anything here, uh, let me see. If there's any, if there's any, give me a second, guys. Sister Peggy, <laughs> thank you for the um, the twenty dollar donation. Peace and avocado grease. Trenton, Trenton Gorley uh, said, "Tilla, when God says, let us make man, does that mean there are there there's more than one God? We believe that there is one God, three co-eternal persons, one unit, right? They they work together as a unit. Um, and uh, when 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 God says, "Let us make man," he was talking about, he was talking to, he was talking to, um, to uh, Christ, and Christ.
Christ and um, he was talking he was talking to Christ and uh, the Holy Spirit. So someone said, let me see, Sandra, Sandra and who? Sandra and Gabriel, Sandra and Gabriel. Sandra says, this has been so hateful towards me. Why is that? Um, can you explain that to me, Sandra? I believe everything that the Adventists believe except this. Can you explain why this was, um, uh, this was, uh, uh, this made you feel that way? She claims to be Jewish. Sandra says, I'm Jewish. Okay. Okay, so I just want to ask, I just want to ask, what, what exactly did I say that offended you? Mm. Okay, Sandra says not you. Okay. Okay, w well what what exactly Oh, a lot of people on here are offending you? Who's who exactly is offending you? Sorry, sorry guys. I I, I don't have um I um I wasn't looking at everything that's uh that's on the the chat. So if there's anybody that's that's being offensive um, on the chat, um, you can please let uh, let me know, or you can you can email me um, and let me know who are the ones or what what happened there. Because I didn't, I wasn't looking at the chat. I didn't know that people were being offensive in the chat. I'm sorry about that, uh, Sandra. Yeah, I'm not sure who's the one. Who? What? What are people saying? And then we can get to the bottom, bottom of it. Yeah. Okay. Machiavelli. The verse is about Michael. Yeah. Yeah. See. Uh, see. You got to remind me sometimes because when I'm like when I'm doing the, the lives and stuff and. I was supposed to say something at the at the end. I probably I'm, I'm, there's a, there's a high probability that I'm I'm not going to um, that I'm not going to say it, or uh, th there's a high prob probability that I will forget. So let's see. Oh, I see. Okay, so so I see what you're saying. Okay. Sandra, there are some people here that are not Adventists. Um, there, unfortunately, there are, <laughs> there are some people here that believe differently. Um, so, yeah, there's no way that I can tell who were the who are who is who or who believes what and who was saying things. But um, but yeah, there are certain. Yeah, there are certain groups that, that that come to to these studies, um, and my apologies. So, so for those who who are who are here, and are are getting offended by the people that are that are here, that are not from the Seven Day Adventist denomination. Um, <laughs> I I can't control their mouths, so I'm kind of used to the trolls. But um, yeah. So whatever whatever it is that you know, I, my wife just told me that there are some here that are from a different group, um, and that different group, whatever it is that they're saying on here, uh, if it's not aligned with 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 what I with what I was teaching um, just now, 
you can block them, you can you know ignore them, whatever. But the, some of the you know some of the some of the things that they're saying here uh, on this chat on this chat because sometimes I can't see everything um, are not necessarily my my beliefs. So and and I'm sorry about that. I mean, YouTube is a very <laughs> YouTube is very um, uh, how do you say it? YouTube is a very I don't even know I don't even know what to say. But but yeah, YouTube can be very uh, iffy sometimes. Okay. Anyways. So so okay so Machiavelli back back to your question so so Jesus um, is Jesus Michael the Archangel okay let me answer that with some scripture now there is no easy way to answer this because you really gotta okay so before. Before we answer that, the word angel is angelos, which means messenger. So a pastor can be an angel, right? Um, an, a, a, seraph, ser, a seraph or a cherub can be, you know, they're, they're also called angels. Um, anyone with a message from God is an angel, Okay. Um, so angel is kind of like the, the term angel is, uh, it's not like a, it's not, you, it's not unique to those creatures with wings. Okay. Um, arch, archangel is something different. Archangel means the commander or the captain of the angel. Okay. So, uh, archangel is not necessarily the messenger, archangel, means the commander or the captain of the angel, or, or the angels, or the captain of the Lord's hosts. That's what archangel means. Okay, so I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you three texts, three passages that I want you to think about, okay? Um... John 5, okay, John 5, I believe it's in John 5. John, yeah, 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 okay, so I believe it's in John 5. Let, let's go on, on the screen. Um, let's, let's take a look, I, I think it's in John 5, John 5 in verse 30. Uh, no. John 5 and you know what I'm just going to I'm just going to search it up this way. I'm going to search it up this way. Yeah, John 5 and verse 28. There it is. Okay. So this is Jesus talking, okay? This is Jesus talking, okay? It's red. It says, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Okay? The hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Okay? So Jesus says, so, so Jesus is talking about himself. He says, the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They will resurrect, right? So the cue to the resurrection of the people is Jesus' voice, right? There's another verse in Jeremiah, I believe it's in Jeremiah 25, I can't really think of it right now, where it says that the, the Lord shall roar upon high. I, I think that's what it says. Let's go there one let, let's go there real quick. Um 
I believe it's in Jeremiah 25. Yeah, Jeremiah 25 in verse 30. Okay. Jeremiah 25 in verse 30. Um, um, okay, therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, saying unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall uh, mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout. Okay, and this is talking about that day, the day of the Lord. All right, so he's talking about the day of the Lord. The Lord is going to give a shout. Okay, the Lord is going to give a shout. And when the Lord gives a shout, that's Jesus Christ. Remember, John 5 and verse 28 says, When the Lord does give that shout, the hour is coming into which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. So he gives a shout. Those that are in the graves will hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Okay. Okay. So now, so we have the Lord coming down from heaven, shouting. He will give a shout. He will roar from on high, right? And when he shouts, they will hear it. Those who are in the graves will hear his voice and will resurrect. Okay. Okay, one more time, one more time. So, the Lord will come down. He will give a shout. He will roar from on high. And uh, um, when He shouts, those that are in the graves will hear His voice and will resurrect. Okay? Now, whose voice, whose voice cues the resurrection? Whose voice The Lord's voice, right? The voice of the Lord or the, or the voice of Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay. So, the, the Lord's voice or the, the voice of Jesus Christ is the voice that cues the resurrection. Now let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That means resurrect. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay. I'm, I'm going to leave that to you guys. I'm going to leave that to you. What do you, what do you say about that? So the Lord descends. In Jeremiah 25, it says that He's going to roar from on high. Um, in John 5, it says that Jesus Christ will shout and those that are in the graves will hear His voice, Jesus Christ's voice, and then they will resurrect. In 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16, it says that the Lord Himself will shout with the voice of the archangel. So, those who resurrect, who are dead in Christ and, and will rise first, they hear the voice of the archangel. In John 5, they hear the voice of Jesus Christ. In, first, in, in, in Jeremiah 25, they hear the voice of the Lord. In 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16, they hear the voice of the archangel. I'm going to give that to you. I'm going to give that to you guys. Remember, Archangel, Archangel means the commander of the Lord of, uh, 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 the commander of the, um, of the angels. The commander of the angels or the captain of the angels. So the commander of the angels, this is the person, the Archangel is the person that commands the angels. So the angels receive their commandments from the Archangel. I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'll give that to you guys. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Anyways, I got to, I got to call my, 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 um, my brother, um, Sixto. We're going to set up another live stream in about maybe, I don't know, give, give me about 30 minutes. Um, we're going to go for about an hour. So again, so, so again, so yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Philip says, Brother Tilla, I love how much you love studying about God. You can never have a short study. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, man. And and we're gonna do another study about marriage right now, actually, in about 30 minutes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stop going live. In about 30 minutes, we're gonna go live again. Okay. So I'll see you guys in about maybe maybe 30 minutes. I'll see you guys later. Peace and avocado grease.